Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to bring you a review of the My D Link Home Music Everywhere devices. Now, one of the things I've talked a lot about on this channel over the last year is multi room audio and how to achieve it, especially if you don't want to spend tons of money on brand new speakers. Now, for a while, I was using a pure Jongo system. However, it stopped really being particularly useful when iOS 11 first came out and the app stopped working. Pure have now fixed this. However, about six months ago, I switched to the D-Link Home Music Everywhere devices instead. Now, these devices are a little bit different because they are, in fact, twofold devices. Firstly, they are wireless extenders. This means they can extend your network across your house. Secondly, they are about streaming music wirelessly. This means they haven't got Bluetooth built in, but they work with DLNA and Apple AirPlay. For me, as an Apple user, it was the Apple AirPlay that really sold me to these. I've been using these in every room in my house for about six months, and so I thought it was time to bring you guys a review. Now, one thing to note at the start of this review is actually when I was researching this on the D-Link website in preparation for this, it seems that actually about a month ago they've decided to discontinue these devices. On one hand, this is really disappointing, but actually it also means there's been a big price drop. And so if this is something you're looking to go to, this might be the time to buy. So let's start off the review by talking about price. The RRP of these devices is around £60. This is actually quite expensive for what they are, but if you go on Amazon or eBay at the moment, they're somewhere between £15 and £20. This makes them a much more affordable option. Next, before we talk about features, let's talk about the design. The design of the device is essentially a plug with a kind of block attached to it. This means it isn't the slimmest or kind of smallest design, but actually with its rounded edges, I think it looks quite nice when it's plugged in and fairly inconspicuous. On one side of the device, you'll find a WPS button. This is for pairing with a router if it's compatible. The front has a status light and the base has a headphone port. In the box itself, when you first get the device, you get a variety of things. First up, you get the device itself. Then you get a 1.5 meter jack to jack cable, which is great for connecting it to a speaker. You also get the instruction manual, and then you get a little card that tells you how to connect to that specific device. As part of that, there's also a sticker with those details on as well. This means because I've got multiple ones, I've stuck those stickers onto each one, so I know which is which. Next, let's talk about setup. One of the biggest complaints there seems to be out there is that setup is a little bit difficult to do. And actually, those complaints aren't necessarily wrong, but there are a variety of ways of doing it. Regardless of how you set up the device though, you're certainly going to need to follow the instructions in the manual. There are in fact three ways of getting this device set up. The first is using the QRS app, which is available either from the App Store or for Android or Google. The second is to use that WPS button to pair it with your router. And the third is to kind of connect to it as a wireless network in itself when you first switch it on and then use a web interface. For me, I set all of mine up using a web interface because I found the app really difficult to get my head around and it was much easier to do it that way. From this web interface, you can also upgrade the firmware on the device, you can set a password, you can name your extended network and you can turn on things like AirPlay and DLNA and name your room. When it comes to naming the extended network, you've got a couple of choices. You can name it something completely different and give it a different password and this means you've effectively got a second network going on. This is great perhaps if you've got guests coming around and you don't want them to connect to your main network. The other option is to give it the same name and password as your existing network. This will effectively mirror your network and your devices will just connect to the network that's strongest wherever you are in your house. For me, I don't use the extended network feature because these devices only support mirroring 2.4 GHz networks. For most people, this probably won't be a problem, but my home network supports 5 GHz networks as well as 2.4. This means I want to be on the 5 GHz network most of the time on my devices so I can get the fastest speeds. All this means is when it came to setting up extended networks, I just called it whatever the room was that it was in and never bothered to connect to it. These devices still connect to your main network and so it doesn't affect things like audio streaming. So let's talk about the most important feature on this device in my opinion, the ability to wirelessly send audio to these devices. In particular, let's start by talking about AirPlay. Once you've got these devices set up, they appear under the audio menu in iTunes on Windows or Mac, or in the music app on your iPhone or iPad. In my case, this simply looks like a list of rooms in my house, because that's how I've named the devices. If you're playing from a Mac or a PC, one of the things you can do by iTunes is achieve multiple room audio. This means you can have the same song playing out of different speakers at the same time. This is a nice feature to have, however the big disadvantage is that they don't play in sync. This means if you can hear one room from another, then you're going to hear kind of out of sync audio and it will be really irritating. On iOS devices, you don't quite achieve multiple room audio, you just achieve easy connectivity. 
because iOS at the moment doesn't support sending audio to more than one AirPlay device at a time. Now, when Apple eventually get around to releasing AirPlay 2, which should have come out with iOS 11, we will have that feature. The big question, however, is will this work with these devices? And to be honest, I have no idea. What I will do, however, is when this feature eventually arrives on my iPhone, I will post an update below and let you know whether it works with the D-Link devices. The other thing to note is that sometimes there's a short lag between hitting play on your device and the audio actually coming out of the speaker. You also find that sometimes if the signal is a little bit weak on your device, the audio drops out. For the most part, however, in my six months experience of using these, I found them pretty reliable and they certainly fit my needs when it comes to sending music to different rooms of my house. In particular, it's an especially good solution if you're an Apple user, because being able to airplay things means you can do that straight from the app that you're in, rather than having to go into settings or use a kind of third party app before sending music to different rooms in your house. As I said when I was talking about setup, it can also stream music via DLNA. This means these devices do work for Android users. This is one of the features I haven't actually been able to test as I'm not an Android user, but I'd assume that it probably works all right. If you want to know more about that, I suggest you do a bit of a Google search and see what other user experiences are like. All in all, this is a great, affordable way of getting AirPlay into lots of different rooms in your house. In terms of the downsides, it can be a little bit buggy at time, and that kind of lag between sending it to multiple devices from your computer is a little bit irritating. That being said, they certainly meet my needs, and actually I found that they're really, really good devices to have around. And especially with the price drop at the moment, they're certainly worth looking into if you're looking for some way of getting airplay into different rooms in your house. Hope you guys have found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, stick them down below. I do try and answer as many of those as I can, and I'll see you guys again soon.